Okay. We are live, bro. We're, we're live. Sweet deal, man. Well, dude, thanks for doing the podcast this yeah, early. Man. Well, I guess it's not that early where you are, but God damn it. Yeah. Eight, eight o'clock for me. <laughs> yeah. So I guess more people, more people will join in on your side more than mine. Mine people are probably still sleeping, man. I'm making that beer. Perhaps. <laughs> I, I, have, I have one client friend that, that's watching, I think. He oh, might have left by now. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> awesome, man. Well, good. Yeah. It's been a while. How you been doing? Been, uh, been okay. Really tired. I'm an old man now. <laughs> yeah. You hit the, you hit the 40 mark. <laughs> hit the 40 mark yeah last month (laughs) ah that's crazy man Mm -hmm. like do you feel like you're 40 or i feel 40 but i don't really act like i'm 40 yeah that makes sense (laughs) like i still feel like i'm in my 20s but then like i wake up in the morning and my back hurts and my feet hurt (laughs) yes really hard to put socks on (laughs) yeah that's the sign man it's always when you wake up that's that's the reality right there but like life, life is fun. Life is good. That's good, uh, dude. But uh, yeah, I definitely feel it sometimes, and then other times I'm like, oh yeah, I'm an old man. Yeah, and man. Then I hear like young kids talk, and I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm old. I have no idea what the fuck they're saying. <laughs> yeah, that's another one too. Yeah, is you know you think you understand until yeah they start saying all these fucking weird phrases, and you're like, yeah, all right, we're at that point now. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> no cap oh my god yes <laughs> oh fuck it's so brutal man mm-hmm. and yeah because how long have you been when did you move over to toronto how long ago was that uh so i moved here twice 2009 to 2012 and then that's when me john and miles had started that printing company like 2011 i think yeah yeah yeah. We started that in toronto and then i got tired of being broke <laughs> so i moved <laughs> back to back to edmonton <laughs> And then I got into hair around 2015. Okay. And went went to school for it 2016. And then moved back here 2017 in the fall. Goddamn, quite the journey there. What yeah. made you want to go into hair? Uh, so I was always like into hair. Like I think you might remember like my blonde like trihawk yes. <laughs> yeah. like the Dragon Ball Z look or whatever <laughs> I was doing. 100%. But yeah, I was always kind of like doing my own hair and like friends hair and and stuff like that and always like experimenting doing like weird shit i don't know it was kind of it was always kind of like the backup plan if i wasn't going to be a rock star i was going to be uh get into hair but i wanted to do cosmo in high school but this was like back in like 98 99 and like middle of alberta so they wouldn't let guys do cosmetology they're like you just want to meet girls and i was like well no oh. i'm having an interest in hair like i want to i want to learn They're yeah like, you're oh. just doing this to pick up chicks man yeah. come on that would have been a plus but i mean whatever that's not <laughs> what i wanted to do cosmo for i was actually interested in like doing like cuts and color and, and whatever but yeah guys counselor said no so i went into like art and drama and design and i wanted to do shop but i think it was full Mm. and then mechanics was just too too gritty for high school oh okay yeah i don't want to get all like greasy and then have to go to like math after (laughs) true enough yeah where'd you go to high school sal sal comp oh you went to sal okay nice yeah (laughs) because you're you're in sherwood park yeah i am now yeah i never lived in sherwood park no no i just i always lived on the north side of edmonton i think i've been here in sherwood park for like almost 11 years now okay yeah 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 because you were always in this area right yes until like i moved out so i think i moved out first time at 21 22 yeah i had a condo in the west end and then yeah had a house at 25 in mill woods and then i had a townhouse in Terwilliger. so yeah i lived like around mostly the south end south and southwest of edmonton and yeah, then most yeah. of Sherwood Park. Like I grew up in Sherwood Park from like grade two till my early twenties. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. definitely like the the typical suburban pop punk <laughs> kid in Sherwood Park. Yeah, no doubt, man. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny too, like uh 
because I was thinking about that too. Like when I remember, I remember first meeting you, mm-hmm. it was basically because you were doing the promotions, right? Like you were putting on shows and shit. Yes. So like, how old were you when you started doing that? Um, would have been still probably my last year of high school. So like 17, 18. And what made you want to like do that? Like put on shows and shit. I guess because like I just didn't like what other people were doing. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you kind of like take things into your own hands. Like I want to see like these bands together or like. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, I, I think a lot of people thought 13th in Vegas, the brand was a band. I mean, it kind of sounds like a band. <laughs> I guess. Um, and then kids always thought like I would like put on shows or like I would get asked to put on shows or like, when's your next show? And I was like, well, this isn't a band. It's just like I make shirts in my parents' garage. Like, yeah, yeah. And yeah, because you started the shirts before the. Before I started doing like events and stuff. Yeah. God, that's so crazy. And like, so how how the hell do you, how's one get into like printing shirts and shit? I think we, we learned how to do it in com tech class in, in high school, but I actually never took com tech. Oh, okay. I would skip class and join my friend Bryce in his com tech class. Yeah. And it was the same teacher that taught me art. So he'd see me in the class that I'm not like registered in. He's like, what the fuck are you doing here? Like, go away. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I learned how to do shirts in Comtech even though I wasn't registered in Comtech. <laughs> nice and, man. And I think Dan had Dan had acquired a press, but he had nowhere to put it at his place. So yeah. we put it in my parents' basement because I had like a kitchen suite in my parents' acreage. So we started doing it there and we'd like make screens in the bathroom, wash them out in the bathtub. And eventually my parents were like, no more of this. Like the bathtub's all green from like the, the screen emulsion. And so we ended up oh, getting man. our screens made like at one of our suppliers. Yeah. That was, that was more beneficial. And then eventually I think me and Dan bought a bigger press and then we put it in my parents' garage. And uh, Dan was busy touring with Calico Drive. Yeah. So I just kind of like went went with it. So 13th nice. in Vegas was me and him. And then I think he came back from like his second tour with Calico and was like, yeah, you're kind of like doing this without me. So like, uh, I'm going to do my own thing. You do your own thing. And yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It was so funny. There was a, on the Instagram live, someone put a, a thing asking when I was going to interview Dan and you and Dan would be a good duo. <laughs> Actually, we had we had like a falling out for quite a few years. I ran into him, so it was John Wiseman's birthday, I think, probably like 2018, 2019, mm. and that was the first time I saw Dan since uh, like 2010, maybe. Oh wow! Okay. And yeah, like we were such like a tight knit crew back then, and now we're we're just so different. Yeah, well, that fuck that happens, right? Yeah, but uh, so much know. happens after years and years of. He's still hilarious. Old. Oh he's... yeah, he's still the same. Yeah, <laughs> like for me, so much has changed, but he he'll he'll come up to me like nothing's changed, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I don't know you anymore, man. Like I I don't know. He's but... such a he's such a free spirit, that guy. Yes. <laughs> I know. I know. Matt Frey would always joke like he's running from his problems. And... Yeah. Yeah. I think his brand is called always running. (laughs) Yeah, it is. So there you go. (laughs) Yeah. He's, I think he's enjoying life. I think he's out of the country right now. Yeah. He's doing some stuff in Arizona there. Last time I was uh, chatting with him. Yeah. He's doing, I thought he was like down in like Dominican or something like painting houses or something. Yeah. He was like in the Bahamas painting houses and shit. Yeah. Bahamas. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, you freaking guy. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, good times back then. Hell yeah, man. Cause that's so crazy that it's been that long. Yeah right because yeah, yeah over 20 years yeah yeah because yeah i remember like lockhart productions all that mm-hmm. stuff like <laughs> holy shit dude mm-hmm. it was like yeah man we got to get on this like freaking lineup here <laughs> yeah well because i put your first band on it wasn't letters to elise it was your band before letters to elise i think it was still letters to elise but we had a different name it was late slip late slip 
that's what it was i still i have like uh i still got like some of the little promotion tags and stuff like no that. no way yeah okay. dude that's cool yeah, freaking blast from the past man it's like holly springs disaster and like oh man they're, i still listen to them they're still on my like spotify playlist yeah they're like a super band but they were like a bunch of dudes from like other successful bands that came together and like pumped out this ep that was just epic oh yeah yeah no yeah there's so many bands back then i still listen to too i don't know mm-hmm. kind of like how's the scene i don't know do you like how's it in toronto like i don't know it's not you know it's not the same anymore like it used to be here well because i think like we're so like out of touch with it maybe yeah maybe and the that's, toronto what, that's what i kind of always is, thought too it's bigger yeah so i don't i don't really know any local toronto acts other mm-hmm. than I have a few clients that are in bands and so I'll I'll go to their shows, but is it still kind of like within our wheelhouse or is it like more so a different genre over there? I would say a different genre, like more like indie rock. Ah, okay. Gotcha. I don't know too many people my age doing the emo pop punk thing. Yeah. Like here, (laughs) like I guess drive by punch is still kind of doing new stuff. Yeah, I just seen them. They did their, they got back together for like that sea change show here. Oh, that was yeah. so, so good. Yeah, I'm still That was like the Sean. main, that was the main reason I went, man. <laughs> I was like, drive by punch. Fuck yeah, I'm going. No, they're great. I love Chris, <laughs> love Sean, Lonnie. Yeah. Cause yeah, that must have been the other thing, right? Like doing all the promotion and the t shirts. So you, you probably got pretty close with like a lot of guys from like all these different bands and shit. Well, I think with drive by punch like that, we both kind of blew up around the same time. And oh okay it was, we kind of like collaborated like a lot like i was designing their merch selling their merch um sean and like chris and and the guys would like always wear like my stuff on stage and gotcha yeah so people would see them wearing the shirts and then i approached a few stores and they they sold a lot of my sh- a lot of my shirts and stuff like that so that's crazy yeah i kind of blew up around the same time yeah and then what happened, man? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's yeah. always like you look back at those things and it's like, yeah, this like, you know, it's like even mm-hmm. say like, you know, Johnny Empire with his friggin' like Avenue thing. Right. Like that was the yeah. place to play. Mm-hmm. And then, boom. <laughs> yeah. So like, I think that was after my time. I'd kind of like gotten out of it when he was Empire Rising, if you will. Yeah. Because that, that was his first first brand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was when I was kind of like winding down. I think I got into a relationship ah. and her dad was like really successful in, in real estate. Oh, okay. And I just felt like this weird, like punk kid that like would never amount to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, don't know, I just, I didn't feel good enough for his daughter. Gotcha. Okay. But he actually like liked how ambitious I was. That's what he like admired about me. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, if anything, you should admire like how like the hustle you had there. Yeah. So at the time, like I just felt like I was like such small time and I wasn't gonna amount to anything or whatever. I felt like I needed to do more or be more successful or have like more of a professional look or a more professional job. Gotcha. And the kicker was really I couldn't go out in public without people recognizing me and oh. like, kind of like annoying me with like their, their stories or like whatever. I remember being at, I think it was taking back Sunday in the used and I was trying to find a spot where no one would, would bother me. So I kept oh, okay. like running around Northlands. Friggin Mr. Just, celebrity here. Eh? Jesus. Yeah. Like everyone just, <laughs> The worst thing I could have done was put my face on promotion posters. Yeah. And once I did that, like everyone just kind of like recognized me on like the White mm-hmm. Ave, West Edmonton Mall, or like at events. And it got kind of annoying. And I was just like, I'm just a guy that makes shirts. Like I'm no one special. <laughs> I'm not like an influencer. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I didn't like the attention. I just got really sick of it. Really? Eh? Where are you like, do you find yourself, do you find you're like more of an introvert then? Yeah, that wasn't a term back when I was like, yeah, yeah, for sure. 25, <laughs> but yes, I'm definitely like more introverted. Yeah. And that, that's kind of like when someone like flipped the switch. Like I was definitely the the extrovert where everyone would go to the party if I was going because like I was just the ball of energy that everyone would kind of like cling to. 
Oh, okay. At 25, I just got kind of sick of it. I was just like, I'm so tired. And like all these people, like they're not my friends. They just like want what I have or like they want to be around me or gotcha. clout, okay. if you will. I don't know. Yeah. So you could, you could pick that up then from other people. Yeah. I just yeah. remember being at that show and these kids just kept kind of following me around and trying to like tell me how much of a fan they were of my stuff. And I was like, Hey man, like, that's awesome. Like, I love it. Thank you for your support. I'm yeah. just trying to watch the show. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to have a I good really time. I want to see the band. It was my first time seeing the used my first time seeing Take back Sunday, which I just that's really great... wanted to watch the show. It's a great show, man. It it's was a, a good show. show. <laughs> and yeah, I think I finally got to like watch like two songs un- in- uninterrupted really that's insane man it was it was hectic so i just got kind of just got overwhelmed so i don't know like how bad it looked to the outside but for me i was overwhelmed yeah i believe that kind of like stopped stopped going out stopped making shirts i had like a few stores still selling my stuff i stopped promoting stopped doing events so it was just like the slow taper off yeah and then i thought i was gonna get married and settle down and <laughs> become a financial advisor and took out the nose ring and the lip ring and like shrunk my ears. And My God, no. <laughs> yeah. So I, I stopped being a little bit of a, a punk kid and yeah. then sold out a little bit or try, tried to buy in. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> but then financial that really advisor. Work out. Yeah. That's that crazy. didn't last too long. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not doing this. <laughs> It was boring. It was so boring. <laughs> and I'm not good at school. Like I'm not good at books or studying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear I'm you a there. Slow learner. Yeah. I'm really like self-taught. I kind of like need to do things my own way. Gotcha. So to to pass like exams and stuff, like I just I, I wasn't good at it. So oh, like, dude, this isn't gonna work either. Oh man, I was the same. Yeah, I hated like doing all the exams and shit. It was the worst. Like yeah, I couldn't. I could study, and I don't know. There's just something with me. I could never like get that information to stick yeah <laughs> you know it's just brutal mm-hmm. school i just kind of skated through at like 66 percent. other than like drama class or art class the actual things you barber enjoyed school, i think barber school is the first time i got like a 90 percent on like an exam or like a test nice i was like sweet <laughs> like I'm, I'm good at something <laughs> Yeah, well, at that at that in that case, like you're doing something that you actually want to do, right? Yeah. Like or that you enjoy versus like school. It's like, God, I hate social studies. I hate yeah. this. Like, yeah, I don't do remember not... a thing <laughs> from anything from high school. Yeah, the don't only thing that what books we had to read. Don't remember. Oh, it's the worst algebra. Man. Oh, yeah. The only I thing can... <laughs> I was good at was like math. That was it. Yeah, that was the only thing I was good at. Everything else I hated doing, man. I love that meme where it's like the teacher would call you out on using a calculator and it was oh. like, you know, you're never going to have a little device like with you all the time that can do calculations for you. Surprise. You do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Fuck. Yeah. I remember like getting my first cell phone in high school. Like I think it was like grade 10 or something. And it was still like, it was like a Motorola flip razor or whatever. Yeah. So that and was, I was that like, was this like, is what, so cool. Yeah, pretty much around there. Yeah, I went through two <laughs> motor razors. Nice, I love that thing. It was, <laughs> it was a, like it was, it was so phone. it was so cool back then. You're just it like, was oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> I'd always like flip it open and yeah, and you look so freaking shut cheap, like man. using my chin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bye. Yeah, you look so cool. Mm-hmm. And then the friggin' iPhone came out. Yeah, and all that stuff. I Is think it? I got my first iPhone 2009 when I was doing printing with Tony at Sick Transit. Oh, okay. So I think I I got like the second generation iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. And then, yeah, man, like that was always such a thing to get to was uh, getting like an iPad. It's like, dude, this is like, you know how many songs I, I, I can fit on this book? An iPad, but I'd, I'd love an iPad. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. iPod. That's what mm-hmm. I'm meaning. Yeah. Remember the iPod? I still have both of my iPods. I I still have mine too. And like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll go through. I'm like, look at all this shit. And it's so funny. Like, <laughs> I seen one fucking meme. It was like, no one will ever know the struggle of putting your music on. And it's like, there'll be like the same band like four times. Yeah. 
but like, there's little changes in their name. <laughs> yeah, Blink-182 was the worst one. That be, was like, the worst Blink-182 one. Blink-182 yeah. with a space, Blink-182 with a dash. Yeah. Uh, and then Blink-182 without the space. Yeah, and capital B. Was, was different. Yeah, that was so the had, worst uh, one. <laughs> my, my OCD, like, couldn't handle that. So I would go in and, like, change all that. So it was, it was one. Yeah. Oh, I, w- I would go insane, too. It, it was so goddamn annoying. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was just now, very organized. Yeah, and now we just go on like Spotify or Apple Music yeah. and shit. There you go. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, man. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, I still remember like burning CDs and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when Angels and Airwaves put out uh, the Adventure. Yeah. And I was it was the night before I left for a tour with Transit Radio, so it was me, Jerry, Dave, Josh spending the night at josh's house and jerry was just scouring the internet for this song oh of course of course he was (laughs) 4 30 in the morning and we all put it on on cds and i think that was the first time i made an mp3 cd oh damn put like 800 songs on a disc yeah and then I, i didn't know where you could play an mp3 cd other than a computer until like your your car cd player was like mp3 compatible oh okay and then you could have like 800 songs on one disc jesus so that, that was the first time i did that and i was like josh come here look at this i'm putting like more than 30 songs on this disc and we yeah. got it up to like 800 and it was it was just wild but then i couldn't find anywhere to put this cd in. yeah yeah that's crazy I think it took about a year we yeah, have binders and binders and yes. binders of just ripped cds yeah, and it was always like a surprise if you didn't label it. You're like, oh, yes. I wonder what this one is. <laughs> Let's check it out. <laughs> I remember, uh, so Rob from from Stereos, he used to work for me when when I was managing my parents' trucking company. Man, you have like, it's, yeah, it's funny hearing these stories, like all these connections. <laughs> yes. Well, because yeah, we were we were like all tight back then. Yeah. And this was before Stereos. This was. I think after he was in Calico or maybe oh, like okay. in between or maybe he was still in. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'd, we'd go through the binders and we'd, we'd have like a, a schedule based on like our, our moods in the morning. So we'd listen to like uh, Imogen Heap in the morning or like Death <laughs> Cab or Postal Service. Nice. And after we had our coffee at the warehouse and we'd like get all of our paperwork we'd listen to something a little more upbeat like armor for sleep or whatever and then by the the day would end it'd be like starting line and like funeral for a friend and nice we yeah that's hilarious yeah <laughs> scheduled your music all right <laughs> pretty much based on like how how we were feeling like throughout the day i mean it's not a terrible idea yeah your mood go off your mood yeah. for sure <laughs> mm-hmm. no that was, awesome. that was fun Heck yeah man mm-hmm. and then yeah like I guess growing growing up too, like, because you know we always use, usually listen to what our parents listen to. Like, what kind? Like, did you like listen? Was it always just like rock country growing up before you found you like your thing? So what I call minivan tracks is what my parents listen to. Minivan tracks. Because I'm the youngest of four, so oh, I was damn. always like back of the van, and my parents would just blast like uh, CCR, uh, ABBA. Um, Randy Travis, Nitty Gritty <laughs> Dirt Band, yeah. Buddy Holly, Simon and Garfunkel. And at the time, I hated it. Mm-hmm. But like growing up, I think by the time I, I hit my like mid 20s, I started to appreciate those. Yeah. So even to this day, like I listen to a lot of like Buddy Holly, Simon and Garfunkel, CCR. Yeah, CCR will always remind me of like going to work with my dad in the truck and like going on these like long hauls at like all hours of the day, moving bread to like moving super and Grand Prairie. <laughs> I would have been like 12. So like Friday night, we'd leave, we'd pack up the truck full of bread, we'd drive all night to Grand Prairie, get Jeez. to like Superstore Grand Prairie by like four or five in the morning on a Saturday. Yeah. We'd unload the bread and then we'd drive back. And then my dad would need to sleep by like noon ish or like maybe like 10 a.m saturday morning yeah. so we'd always like go to this one truck stop and it was so boring for me <laughs> so i'd like build forts and like in nice. the trees and whatever and 
<laughs> I'd always try and wake them up or whatever. You kept yourself and then entertained. When I was old enough to drive, we would take turns sleeping if we oh, ever yeah. did like that kind of route. Yeah. But I didn't start driving till like 19. Oh, really? Eh? But yeah, those are the bands like my dad would listen to, like Beach Boys, CCR. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, my dad was into Rolling Stones. And I huh. found this out when a buddy of mine had helped my dad on a route. Okay. And it's Johnny Maynard is the buddy. You might know Johnny. It sounds familiar, yeah. Um, yeah, he played in that band with Paul and Dave. And he was also in Calico for a bit. He played bass in Calico. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember what other band. But yeah, me and Johnny were tight for a while. And he worked He worked for us. So he went on a on a trip with my dad. He got to know more about my dad in a six-hour day than I have in my entire life. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> so I remember Johnny getting in the truck with me the next day and was like, dude, your dad is so cool. Like, like what? We're talking about the Rolling Stones and like all these cars he had growing up and like this and that. And I was like, huh? What the, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> My dad's such a gomer. Like he doesn't even talk. Like, how did you get all this information? That's he was hilarious. Like, oh, just like asked him questions. I was like, Oh yeah. I never asked my dad questions. So yeah, that's so it, true. It right? was really funny to like learn more about my dad from my friend. Oh, that's fucking funny, man. So you were the youngest of four kids. How was, was that? How, how was that growing up? uh i'm still the black sheep are you okay like the weirdo um i'm how like big... close with my family but i'm not close with my family okay how big's the like the age gap um so my older sister is like nine years and then my next older sister's five years okay my brother is like three years older oh, okay so i remember when jeremy left elementary school so we were in the same school up until he hit grade seven and i remember him being so stoked he's like oh me and nathan are never going to be in the same school ever again yeah <laughs> i was like oh okay that, that's mean yeah screw you dude <laughs> um God yeah that's funny man but yeah that was the age gap so it was a little bit like i did hang out with my brother's friends quite a bit in high school yeah typical Hang out with your older oh, brother's friends, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like my friends got into like like drinking and drugs, and like I was I was sober till like twenty five. I didn't really drink or do drugs or anything. Really, eh? Till twenty five? Like, did yeah. you ever like try to drink or anything? I think like that? eighteen or no sixteen. I went to a house party, got drunk once. Didn't really see the point because I was always yeah. like the loud hyper kid. I didn't need it to have fun. Yeah. So, did it even like enhance that in you then? Like you did it, it made me just more, more stupid. Oh, okay. <laughs> like I remember falling down the stairs quite a bit. <laughs> oh shit. All right. You're like, I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't really need this to have fun. And the taste like bothered me. I was like, this doesn't taste good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember. Let's just go yeah, to for... get candy. Like let's eat Starbucks. <laughs> let's see. Yeah. Let's have something that tastes like delicious. <laughs> yeah. That's a long time. 25. Crazy, man. Yeah. I, I remember Tony. Uh, it was one of his like events at Union Hall, and we we had just met because he needed help with a hoodie order for a band, and I had a bunch of like American Apparel white hoodies, and so he reached out and was like, "Hey man, like, do you by chance have any American Apparel white hoodies?" And I was like, "Yeah, I have thirty. Like, do you want them?" And he's like, "Perfect. Like, that's exactly what I need." So yeah, I hooked him up, and he's like, "Oh, I'm doing this event. You should come." I was like, "Oh, okay," and so I go, and we're like shooting the shit. And I think I was watching the OC at the time. Okay. The and it was OC. one of the episodes where Sandy and what was the what was the other guy? I don't Anyways, know this. <laughs> they're having a barbecue, they're drinking coronas. It's their first like guys night together. And I was like, he kept anyway, Tony kept pressuring me to have a beer. And I was like, Oh, I don't drink. He's like, What the have a beer, man? And I was like, I don't know, I don't drink. Like it's fine. I think after about three hours, he finally got me to like have a beer. So I was like, okay, like I've seen this beer like a lot on TV. I'll I'll have a Corona. I was like, okay, okay. this isn't so bad. And then, so I think that's when my like stupidity with drinking, that's when I learned like my limits. Mm. And I was not, uh, not as seasoned as a lot of my friends. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. 
so I had a, a, a bunch of like weird, weird, uh, weird nights that way. I remember Jamin McLean's bachelor party. I was, so they had, they had all went bowling and I had to stay back to print the shirts for the bachelor party. Nice. So they were all bowling and getting hammered. And I met up with them at Earl's around seven. And so they were all plastered. And so I thought I had to like catch up. Ah. So I had like <laughs> three martinis, a Bellini beer, which was Jamie's favorite because he was managing the Earls at the time. So he created his Bellini beer thing. Yeah. And on the north side, right? No, the, the South Common, not quite. South oh, was Common. it South Common? Okay. The Gateway Boulevard one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Jamie had managed that one. So, yeah, we'd, we'd gone there and there was like 20 of us. So, yeah, I had a Bellini beer three martinis and like five shots in the span of like 45 minutes. Oh, dude. And I was like, whoa, (laughs) I need some food. I need some water. The food and the water did not help. Like everything just kind of hit me at once. I was like, I got to get out of here. Like I need to go home. Dude. And I just remember some guys were like ripping the sleeves off their shirt. And I tried to rip the sleeve (laughs) off my shirt. And then it just like ripped like across the chest after I ripped the sleeve. And there's this one photo where I think it was either Bryce or Jamie was like, yo, like what happened to your shirt? And I was like, I don't know. No, my God. So it's just me like screaming and pointing at them is the photo I remember. Oh, that's hilarious. You just see me like wearing a wearing a hoodie underneath and the shirt over top. And it's just like super ripped across the chest. Anyway, so I had to I had to leave. Yeah. So I, oh my there, god. That location had like a taxi phone room where you could like use the courtesy phone, but it was oh, okay. for taxis. So I tried like standing. I was leaning against the wall and I'm like dialing this cab company. And eventually I'm on the floor. Ooh. And like I think three cab companies hung up on me cuz I couldn't even like you couldn't even talk. Sentence. I couldn't put a sentence together. <laughs> like, fuck this. <laughs> and. <laughs> oh, my God, man. So eventually, I think Tony finds me. He's like, dude, like, what happened? Like, why are you on the floor? I was like, I'm trying to go home. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean you need to go home? You just got here. He's like, you're not even drunk. I was like, dude, I'm plastered. And I told oh him what God. I had to drink. He's like, holy fuck. Like, let's get you home. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're done, dude. He helped me dial the cab company. I get in the cab. And we get to my house in Mill Woods, and right as we park the van, I puke up all the water I had consumed. I think I had five pints of water trying to like sober <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the cab driver's like, "Oh no! Like, what have you done?" <laughs> like it was just all water. <laughs> like it was just all liquid. So it wasn't. Like... But anyway, I get out of the cab. I tip him like forty bucks. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Hop in the bathtub and I'm just like melting in the bathtub. Dude. And I think by like 10 o'clock I kind of like came to. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah, that's the friggin' worst, man. Those so I, I learned <sighs> late my my drinking limits. Yep. So in the same year where I started drinking. Jesus Christ. Many man. people kind of experience those at like 16. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was late to the party. <laughs> Yeah, true enough. Yeah, that's quite the age to have that happen, man. Oh, but now Jesus. for wine and whiskey, and I just drink it straight. Ooh, elegant man. But uh, yeah, not yeah. I've never been a partier, so yeah, yeah. You sip like a gentleman. There you go. Nice man. What kind of? Yeah, see, I've never gotten too much into like whiskeys. No, like, I don't. No, I don't know what it is. Like, especially like straight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. Like, what's like? How'd you get into that? Like that's quite the jump from like beer. Thirtieth birthday, my brother bought me a bottle of Jack Daniels. Uh oh, see, I can't do Jack, man. But it wasn't a regular Jack Daniels. It was bef- he got it in like Texas or something. So it was when like the Jack Daniels like honey, Tennessee oh. honey came out. Okay, so it was sweeter, and I love candy. So like that was, that was gotcha. right up my alley at the time. Yeah. Okay. But it was like it was too sweet. So. That's what got me into like regular Jack Daniels. And I was like, okay. And then I got introduced to like cognac and then like bourbon. And I think bourbon's probably my favorite. Bourbon and cognac. Nice. And, and 
yeah Scott. fits your fits your fits your persona i guess so <laughs> with the dirty barber thing <laughs> i guess so i guess you got like yeah especially like how you promote like the dirty barber thing too it's like it very it fits well with it you know what i mean i guess so i like the dirty barber kind of like comes from so many things like yeah uh, one of my nicknames is double bowl with like darts me and my my friends in edmonton would play darts a lot and i think oh, okay. my first night i shot like a double bullseye so like oh shit we got a new db in the house <laughs> and so when i started barbering i my friend had bought me a flask with db engraved on it oh nice so i kind of wanted to incorporate db into like my dirty or like my barbering like instagram social media handle yeah now is that a brand new like the band brand new concert in calgary and it, it just came to me for some reason and so i like created the handle on twitter and instagram and facebook and it was available and i was like okay the dirty barber and so that worked out really good because as soon as you see as a, when i seen that i was like you fucking genius like yeah, yeah it was a, a great, lot of great don't, handle don't get it a lot of people just like well barbers are supposed to be like clean and i'm like well i get my hands dirty so yes you can be clean. yes yes and like i'm into like rock and roll and like breaking the rules so like yeah i'm surprised that wasn't taken uh well it was early like it wasn't it was before the huge like barbering like uproar like before it was like a little bit more as trendy as it is now gotcha and i also didn't like like american barbers where they kind of like spray paint in beards and like <laughs> yeah everything's so like crisp and like fake and it totally. lasts a day where i was yeah. like I kind of like things looking more natural and I don't know, given, given haircuts that give like you, you have like more longevity out of the haircut. So yeah, I think totally. that was my style up until like the last couple of years where I'm starting to do like crisp lines and like more fades and like more urban styles. Okay. Sweet. Like hip hop culture kind of took over the barbering. Yeah. Barbering yeah, world. for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah flashy tools and shiny colors <laughs> everything's crisp and clean and neat and um, yeah are you still like is it always something new kind of every day like in the sense of like doing the barber thing uh not every day but like it, you feel like you're always learning though learning different oh, shit yeah. yeah definitely always learning like new techniques and like hairstyles are, are like always changing like now you see like that weird like curly hair pomp in the front. Yes. Kids are doing. Oh my I call God. it the, the fuck boy fade. But... That's a good I like that one. <laughs> it's a but good actual name for barbers it. are like, what the fuck are you talking about? Because it's not actually called that. That's just my name for it. But... Yeah, I, I prefer your name. <laughs> yeah. The fuck boy fade. <laughs> it drives me insane. Yeah. It's it's a weird look, but like do you know like but it is. Um, I totally agree with you. It, it, like they have the vibe of like, yeah, just being a fuck boy for sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it, man. <laughs> <laughs> God, because yeah, I would assume that's probably like, is that like the most popular one right now? I think with like from like ten to like twenty five, that's a pretty popular look. Okay. Kids don't want you to touch the top and the front. Like just yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. In my face, it was similar yeah. to like our like emo bangs yeah everyone had the side like yeah sweep it over <laughs> yeah and it's like covering your face almost and... yeah yeah you have to have it cover your eye <laughs> yeah yeah totally <laughs> and and people kind of look at like the beard and like the ponytail as like the man bun trend yes and, like, i think i kind of like outlived that like i kind of started before that became hipster or like whatever you call it yeah yeah like a lot of people call me a hipster and I'm like, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> like I don't do things cause they're cool. I just do them cause I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's funny, right? They kind of people label people just on their looks too. Right. Yeah. Like in the sense of like, yeah, you got like your beard, long hair, mm -hmm. ponytail, all that stuff. So people I just, just always assume wanted that. long hair. How long did it take you to grow it out? Uh, so this is from 2016. I started in 2015 my boss in Edmonton manipulated me into cutting it. I remember when you cut it. <laughs> yeah, I was so bummed. <laughs> and because it was just long enough to tie back. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, 
Yeah. So she had said like customers were complaining about my hair. Really? And then I was like, okay, like I'm new to this industry. Like I'll trust you. Like if people are complaining, like I don't want to like lose business because of it. But like, and she also made me change the dirty Barbara handle. She thought that would like hurt me career wise. And oh. in a way she's right. Like it, it has, but that just kind of made me embrace it that much more. How has it hurt you? Uh, just because like people kind of look at it and they're like, Oh, the dirty barber. Like, I don't want to get my hair cut from the dirty barber. Oh, okay. It doesn't sound appealing to most. And especially gotcha. when urban styles is very crisp and clean. No one wants to look rock and roll anymore. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Just kind of like, yeah, it, probably more so the word dirty is just yeah. some people so are it, off. It but, hinders but, uh... for sure. Like I, I won't deny that, but Lame. <laughs> <laughs> so she manipulated me into cutting my hair. And I remember going to work the next week and her sister was the receptionist at that shop. And she's like, Oh, like she finally got you to cut your hair. And I was like, yeah, she told me like people were complaining and whatever. And she's like, no one complained. She just hated your hair. I was Damn like, her. <laughs> so I was pissed. Oh, um, for sure, man. She set me back like a year and a half, two years of growing my hair. <sighs> and yeah, I changed my Instagram handle back to the dirty barber. And then, yeah, she cut it short enough to where I could not tie it back. Oh, and she's the one who cut it. Yeah, she's the one that cut it. And look, it looked good. Like, I look good with short hair, but I've yeah. always had short hair, and I've always kind of had that clean-cut look. Yeah. So just, I wanted to be – I wanted to look my age. I wanted to be more masculine. I wanted to – Yeah. Because like, with short hair and no beard, I look 15. Like, I look very young and childish. Yeah, I remember you. No, no one, beard. no one would take me seriously. Like I was like in my thirties. <laughs> I was like, I don't look thirty. No one treats me like I'm a thirty year old. Like, yeah, I gotcha. I didn't want to embrace the beard because I didn't want to look like my dad. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we we do look a lot alike. Yeah, you and your dad do. Yeah, you do look very similar. <laughs> so it wasn't until my thirties where I embraced the beard and started to look my age, and I wanted to grow my hair. And so yeah, 2015. I like started doing hair professionally and then wanted to grow up my hair, wanted to embrace the beard. So yeah, that's, that's how that started. And it kind of like turned into my career because that's how I got into barbering was I grew a beard, started going to barbershops to learn more about how to maintain it. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, like I've always been interested in hair. Like maybe I should like, cause I hated truck driving. I wasn't sure what <laughs> I wanted to do. I remember yeah. I wanted to do broadcasting like be like a much music DJ. I could totally see you doing that for sure. And I did audition like the the video. Oh, the v, the VJ video. search and shit like that. Yeah, so I did yeah. those. Got pretty far in that actually, but never really turned into anything. No, okay, nice man. Um, yeah. So I didn't didn't go to school for anything. Didn't know what I wanted to do, and then yeah, barbering made sense. It was something I was interested in. Something I was good at. So yeah. That's how that like started, I guess. That was good, man. I think mm. you found your yeah, I think you found your thing. You so. enjoy... Yeah, man. That's awesome. <laughs> and then like well, uh yeah, in Toronto. The hair is starting to bother me. So it might it might not uh might like not get stick around. Getting too long? Yeah. I like, just got it cut and she cut like three inches off, which was, was a little I... little too short. So like oh, stuff okay. falls out of the ponytail now. Uh I was gonna ask you like if you were to trim it like there's got to be a certain length, you know, that's like too short, like yeah, not I enough. It, I still want it on my shoulders. Okay. I still kind of want to grow it. So it's like down past the boob. Damn. Totally, but nice. Yeah. Right now it's just annoying. So I might like go back to short hair, dye it pink. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> keep the beard though. <laughs> yeah. Keep the beard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that's going to look like. That'll be interesting. <laughs> Because right now I see my face in the video and like I don't see any of my white or gray hairs. It's all just like dark brown. Nice. Nice. Yeah, a lot of white. A lot of white in my beard. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh God. That yeah. I'm mm -hmm. starting to when I grow mine out. Yeah, when I'm growing mine out, I see it right here in the chin. I see yep. some I see some white and I'm like, son of a bitch, it's happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kids kids fun, do man. that. Having kids uh turns your hair a little whiter. Yeah, that's true. It's funny though, like my younger brother, he's five years younger than me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's just like he kind of lived quite the life, like 
out of high school with certain friends, right? Okay. Like he, he's all good now, but yeah, I don't know. That must have put a toll on him because like his hair, he's all he's all salt and pepper, man. Yep. That's yeah. a great look though. It is a good look, but I'm just like, I dude, like really how the hell did this happen? That. The ones that have it don't want it. Yeah. What the fuck? Eh? Like I don't know. But I can't wait. <laughs> like, yeah. Give me that salt and pepper look. Give me the gray hair. Like I wanna look my age. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that look is very I think everyone was always afraid of it, right? Mm -hmm. But now I feel like a lot more people are like really just accepting it. And it looks, yeah. I don't know. I think it just looks cool. <laughs> I have one client. He's like, he's a little bit older than me, but he is like all gray. Oh, really? And I was just like, Chris, like you look so good. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I can't stand a man. Like I've had gray hair for like a decade. And like, I just yeah. feel old, but like, I'm not that old. And yeah. But yeah. He hates it. I'm just like, man, like so many guys want that look. And yeah it's funny yeah it is that's hilarious grass cause... is always greener yeah because i mean when was the last time like you dyed your hair uh probably when i was an apprentice so, really eh? okay yeah i did like a fashion show for one of my one of my co-workers so she we had bleached my hair and then we did platinum so it was like silver at the roots and then we did like dark blue and then it came to like a bright blue and then a baby blue it was, it was like a color melt okay it was really cool but it didn't work well with the beard oh okay <laughs> i was like do i color my beard like do i make my beard like darker or like yeah it just looked kind of funny oh, okay so, yeah that didn't last long and then we tried to get my hair back to my normal color but it came out very red so i had like red hair for the longest time jesus and everyone's just like oh like are you irish are you are you a ginger and i'm like no i don't have red hair my hair's brown god damn it <laughs> yeah i find like yeah people like i don't know is there like a certain way like when you say like if you're going gray or whatever if you try and get dye your hair back to its natural color because i don't know i feel like there's times where it's like you can just it's so obvious to tell that it's dye right like yeah. is there a way to have it look you know more natural than anything or I guess just like doing it slowly. Okay. Like I got to like tone my eyebrows or like fill in. I, I forget what the term's called, but I got to like darken my eyebrows a little bit so you can actually see that I have eyebrows. Oh, really? Eh? They're, they're very blonde and light. Uh, okay. I didn't know you could. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I was going to slowly color in my eyebrows. And make so is that kind of the same process as just hair? Just... Yeah, just a Smaller little bit amount. shorter. You wouldn't want to like leave it in for too long, otherwise it'll be like, oh, very okay. cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that. What is it? Blading, where like they do the oh microblading. No, that's more. That's Fuck. almost like tattooing. I think. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. But yeah, it's just I don't know. That's such that's such a weird thing. Like yeah. uh, tattoo yes, my eyebrows. They actually did that at uh, Concrete Blonde, where I cut your hair. Oh really? Eh. Yeah. So they did they... microblading and and eyebrows oh. and nails and. Interesting. I didn't know they did that there. Yeah, they have they had like a tattoo artist there. They had like a few estheticians. Yeah, yeah they had like twenty five people on staff when I worked there. Oh wow. It was a fun it was a fun job. It was a cool place. I like the vibe there. Yeah. Yeah. But wasn't uh I don't know, Toronto called and I was like, <laughs> Yeah, this is more exciting and I could get away from my family and like <laughs> Because my, my parents always needed me to come back and, like, help the business. So oh, I like, okay. I kind of want to, like, get away from that. Gotcha. Yeah. So, and, huh. like, I kind of felt like I was, like, plateauing in my career as an apprentice. Oh, like okay. I was doing side parts and beards. That's all I was doing. Yeah. And and I like that. Like, that's still, like, one of my favorite things to do. But I wasn't, like, learning anything new. Gotcha. And I didn't work in a barbershop. I worked at a salon. So there's no one to have like a camaraderie with. Okay. Yeah. So when I, I went to Toronto to visit and I just saw like all these like barbershops and like the music scene there and like they have better concerts. And like, I remember when I went to visit, I saw 30 seconds of Mars and Muse. Oh, okay. And it's an epic show. And I was like, we don't get concerts like this in Edmonton. Like, That's you true. You get like, one to two of those like a year but yeah it's, long, it's like all summer long and it's, like, yeah one of my favorite bands and 
And a lot of my favorite pop punk bands will play like smaller venues in Toronto. So that's really cool. So like bands I never got to see growing up in Edmonton. I've, I've now seen them quite a few times in Toronto. That's awesome. Like the movie life came and I'm, I'm the avalanche and uh, senses fail. And uh, with confidence, they're like a newer, well, they're, they're done now, but they're like from Australia. It's a whole like new pop punk scene that, yeah kind of got into in 2019 yeah yeah it's definitely yeah toronto vancouver montreal they get more of the yeah. better better shows mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah that's a bonus isn't it like i don't know is it pretty expensive over there though i f- yeah like rents rents high yeah and, like, living alone is tight I believe that. I don't vacation <laughs> as much as I would like to. <laughs> For sure, man. Especially like after the pandemic. Like after the pandemic, like my clientele like reset. Like people Ooh. move, people change, people like get their girlfriend to do their hair. Yeah. Like I lost probably like 75% of my clients. Really, eh? And so with struggling with that, I kind of like moved to like different shops trying to like build and like trying things out and then that didn't pan out and so yeah it's been it's been interesting the last like four years nice man well i feel like i'm like starting over (laughs) yeah true enough but (laughs) i think things are kind of like getting back to normal now and nice getting busier and that's good man making money i can afford my bills and that's good that's good yeah. i pay for my parents netflix account because i'm god doing well <laughs> nice nice i was gonna say like password sharing man like <laughs> yeah my mom was blowing up my phone all week about that oh really <laughs> what do we do <laughs> like, well what's gonna happen like do i have to log into everyone's account and i was like i don't know just like i'll pay the extra like it's fine just don't worry about it yeah jesus <laughs> and i guess my nieces and nephews in oklahoma they set the the primary account in Oklahoma and my mom doesn't know how to change it. Oh Jesus. I guess they had logged in first when that thing like oh, okay. what when they initiated it or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They had logged in like, oh, I'm the primary. So, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens February twenty fifth. Yeah, we will see. We will yeah. see indeed. Yeah. It is what it is, man. I hope more people complain like the U S the U S complained a lot. So they're like, Oh, we, we didn't mean it. And we put yeah. up a mistake. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Love is love is sharing a password. And I was like, why can't Canadians be more aggressive? <laughs> yeah. No shit. <laughs> too nice. We're too like passive and like, Oh, well, okay. We'll just pay more. And we're like, all right. <laughs> yeah. It's so chill. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> and then where, uh, yeah. Where, where are you working now over in Toronto? What's the place called? Uh, so it's right by my house, which is great. It's called oh, the fitting room. Just walk there. I walk to work. It's like a six minute walk. Oh, so yeah. I go home for lunch. <laughs> and they they're like a more prestigious barbershop. Like they they're focused more on like precision cutting and like it's very meticulous. So I'm learning a lot from these guys because nice man. You spend like an hour on like every client. And where my other barbershops, it was like a half hour. So you're doing like eight clients a day instead of like 16, 17, 18. Oh, okay. So yeah. So I'm not like rushing through haircuts there. And like, that's I'm good. Kind of lo- learning like more sectioning and like precision cutting. Like it's, it's definitely, yeah. Like they, they have like a higher like reputation in Toronto. Like they, they cut like a few of the Raptors and like the maple leaves. And like, it's definitely like a high end specialty shop oh okay nice. sweet that's awesome yeah. man and didn't I didn't think then... i'd ever work in a place like that but and the people are good yeah the people are all right it's, nice uh, i don't think i quite fit in but okay <laughs> I'm, I'm just there to cut hair i don't know <laughs> we'll see how it goes sweet, but yeah man. my boss there is great he's he's awesome he's hilarious i love working work with him that's awesome yeah well at least you're yeah as long as you're enjoying work man <laughs> That's mm. kind of that's kind of a big thing. <laughs> that's always my advice to people because, like, being a truck driver and like having my own businesses and stuff like that, I'll always recommend doing something you enjoy. Like, yeah, good job. Do something that makes you happy. Life is short. Oh yeah, no, I'm kind of in the midst of that transition. I'm gonna be going to a new job because this other one was driving me mm-hmm. crazy. So yeah, yeah, be happy. Life is short. Go, go yeah. do what you want to do. 
yeah man like yeah you're no harm take no shit enjoy your life that's right yeah time flies man Mm -hmm. like fuck yeah you're 40 i feel like (laughs) i'm gonna i feel like i'm gonna be 40 very shortly like it's just like time's going by so fast Mm -hmm. (laughs) oh fuck well yeah man i guess we can we can wrap this one up and then we can chat a bit after but sounds good i appreciate you doing it dude it was fun yeah, thank, catch, for catching me. up, man. Good, uh, reminisce and yeah. be nostalgic and it was fun. Yeah, we'll have to. I don't know, like how often you come back to Edmonton, but we'll have to it's hang. It's been if a you, year. We'll have to hang if you come back if we can. Yeah, man, I'd, I'd like that. Yeah, you can cut your hair in my parents' kitchen. Sounds good. You can show me some bourbons or whiskeys. Yeah, know? absolutely. <laughs> what I'm in. And uh, yeah, I guess like I don't know. Uh, what else you got going on or? Like, what are the handles that people can check you out, man? Uh, so my main, I guess my main Instagram, I set it to private because I was just getting like too much noise and whatever. So it's at the Dirty Barber. And then my like portfolio, if you will, is a house dot of dot dirty. All right. So I guess the brand and like my like household name will be House of Dirty. House of Dirty. Nice. I like it. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that's the portfolio. So that's public. Uh, I post on both. Um, yeah, the Dirty Barber kind of just became like my personal nonsense, like sharing memes and whatever account. But yeah. Sweet, man. All right. Well, people check it out. <laughs> yeah, the, dirty, the dirtybarber.com or houseofdirty.com. Okay, perfect. Maybe we'll edit this video and have like little, little captions pop up or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, we can do something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, appreciate it, man. And thanks yeah. for anyone who watched on Instagram. Woo. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Peace. I'm not going to